In 1905, a discovery was made that would make suburban dads across the world feel like Superman. This was, of course, dimpled golf balls. It was a literal game changer. By halving the drag of golf balls, these dimples allowed them to be hit around twice as far as their smooth predecessors. So why are there not dimples on every surface that's battling drag? I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Xerox Deep Dive. This video is a quest into applying the magic of golf ball dimples to aerofoils and propellers, with a few rough surfaces along the way. So let's see what the latest research says, and how dimples are inspiring the future of propellers and spinning blades. I will warn you, this is a bit more of an exploratory video than usual, but the results are really interesting. I respect your time, so we'll get straight into the inspiration for this and how it works. Back in the early 1900s, like many other golfers, William Taylor wondered why damaged golf balls performed better than new, smooth ones. An optician by profession, he made a DIY wind tunnel to study the vortices and eddies in smoke swirling around potential new surfaces. He saw that evenly spaced indentations created the best airflow. And by the 1930s, it was hard to find golf balls without them, as they were so good at long and stable flight. With these results, it's easy to see why this breakthrough has been on the mind of engineers all over the world. All of them trying to reduce the drag and improve the efficiency of cars, boats, turbines and propellers. Some of you may already know how the dimples on a golf ball works, but it's useful to have a quick refresher as that helps explain some of the more recent breakthroughs. When a golf ball flies through the air, it has to push air out of the way. Doing this creates drag, which is the force that slows it down. If the ball was smooth, the air would flow around it in a way that leaves a big, low pressure wake behind it. This is because the air becomes detached from the ball. That low pressure wake pulls back on the ball, as if it was being sucked backwards and creates a lot of drag. But dimples change how the air flows. They create a thin layer of swirling air called turbulent flow right next to the ball's surface, energizing the boundary layer. Because this turbulent boundary layer has more energy, it can resist detaching from the ball's surface. This causes the air to stick to the ball longer and reduces the size of the wake behind it. A smaller wake means less suction force pulling back the ball and aka less drag. In more technical terms, the dimples are helping to reduce the pressure drag, that drag caused by the low pressure zone at the back of the golf ball. But what we can't forget here is that we also have skin friction drag. I always found this type of drag more intuitive, as it's like the friction slowing down a skidding object except the friction is with the air instead of the floor. The dimples actually increase the skin friction drag because the turbulent air clings more tightly to the ball. However, this trade-off between friction and pressure drag is worth it for a golf ball. These findings are all well and good for the golf course, but there are two main differences that change how these can be applied to other objects, and these are the shape and movement. Clearly, the shape of a ball and an aerofoil or propeller blade is very different. This causes a potential problem, because it's the blunt shape of a ball that makes the dimples work so well. If it was streamlined like an aerofoil, there wouldn't be the huge low pressure wake to get rid of. Secondly, the way a golf ball moves through the air is quite unique. Its dimples not only reduce drag, but also enhance the Magnus effect a phenomenon that generates lift when the ball is spinning due to the deflection of air. There are wings that use the Magnus effect, like this one from the awesome Project Air YouTube channel, so maybe dimples would help for them, though I haven't found any research on this. My general conclusion from this initial research was that what dimples do for golf balls might not be directly applicable to propellers and turbines, because they help to reduce the pressure drag, but for aerofoils, it's the skin friction drag that's most important. However, this doesn't mean that the dimples aren't inspiring the future of propellers. They very much are. I also want to quickly pay an honourable mention to some dimpled cars. 
in the famous Mythbusters episode, they managed to reduce a car's fuel consumption by 14% using dimples, though apparently engineers have struggled to reproduce these results. Also at high speeds, the Bugatti Belide extends 60 individual elements by up to 10 millimeters. According to press articles, it reduces overall drag by 10%, presumably due to the reduced pressure drag. However, real world tests confirming this haven't been publicly shared. But enough about cars, it's time to see dimples in action on turbines and propellers. Right after a quick message from today's paid partner, BetterHelp. Until hearing about some experiences from close friends, I always thought talking to a therapist was for when things went wrong, and as a man, I always thought it was a pretty drastic thing to do. But a therapist is really there to listen, ask questions, and help you see things from new perspectives, which is helpful no matter where you are with your mental health. If you feel a stigma around having a chat with a professional, you're not alone. 62% of adults believe societal attitudes discourage them from seeking mental health help. BetterHelp is the paid partner of this video. I'm working with them to stop the stigma around mental health support and encourage more people to get support from a credentialed therapist. They can give you advice and techniques to make a positive change in your life, and BetterHelp's mission is to make getting therapy as convenient as possible. If you think you could benefit from speaking with a credentialed therapist, click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash Xeroth to match with a therapist as soon as possible. Using my link will also get you 10% off your first month of therapy. Now back to the video. A lot of the research I found on dimpled propellers use simulations. Although these are extremely powerful now, I generally take it with a pinch of salt as aerodynamics is such a complex thing and small variations in models can have large effects on the results. Nevertheless, there was research presented at a conference in 2020 using simulations to study the lift and drag of an aerofoil for a drone propeller. At high angles of attack, the dimples improved the lift to drag ratio by nearly 40%. However, I still wasn't satisfied. The dimples were very far down the aerofoil, and I didn't know if these findings would be the same on different types of propellers. But something was clear, playing around with the airflow at the boundary layer of a propeller definitely does something. Things started to get really interesting when I looked into marine propellers and that is because of something called cavitation. Cavitation, where vapour bubbles form, implode, and collapse in water, can cause serious problems for ship propellers, including noise, vibration, and even physical damage. But a 2025 study shows that adding tiny dimples to the tip of propeller blades can dramatically reduce cavitation. Much like the dimples on a golf ball, these surface features disturb the flow of water in a helpful way. As water passes over the dimples, they create small, swirling flows that even out the main tip vortices. The result is a much more stable flow that is far less likely to trigger cavitation. In fact, this treatment can apparently cut bubble formation by up to 95%, all with almost no impact to the blade's overall performance. To find some more real world examples, I had to think a little laterally. There weren't that many examples with dimples, but there are examples of things that use the same principles of disturbing the turbulence at the boundary layer. Like dimples, vortex generators energize the boundary layer to make the fluid stick to it and reduce pressure drag. This visualization shows how the fins create turbulent vortices that are key to their operation. NASA studies endorsed these vortex generating fins in the 80s as a simple method of improving turbine efficiency. Now a German company called Smartblade have fitted them on 3000 wind turbines worldwide. Placed near the root of the blade, they result in more torque turning the rotor and more energy produced. Smartblade say that from a test of over 100 of the turbines worldwide, they can provide an annual energy gain of 2%. Now I have one final propeller example that I felt tied this all together enough to make a video about it. See, golf balls have inspired so much in aerodynamics. It was the first example of augmenting the boundary layer and controlling the turbulence to improve efficiency. So this final example shows how this way of thinking is inspiring the next generation of propellers. 
As I mentioned earlier, a key benefit of the dimples for golf balls is their ability to reduce pressure drag. But for propellers, the main drag is from skin friction. This is why engineers in China have developed a propeller coating that uses turbulence to actually reduce skin friction instead. It's a new flexible coating that builds on the ideas first seen in golf balls, but has been inspired by the skin of dolphins and contains microstructures of around 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters that guide the formation of the turbulent layer. Instead of increasing the friction drag like the dimples do on a golf ball, this surface roughness actually takes charge of the turbulent layer and prevents it from becoming too large. This in turn makes sure that the friction drag doesn't become too large, minimizing it and making the propeller more efficient. The coating also might be using hydrophobic materials that further reduce friction, though there is limited information on this available. The biomimetic coating has been applied to the propellers of a 300,000 ton ship. In test voyages over 200 days, covering over 35,000 nautical miles between Chinese and Middle Eastern ports, the propellers produced a 2% saving in fuel consumption. For ships that burn so much fuel, this would be a huge saving and could make it economically viable. The press release says it would cost $20,000 to apply and save $140,000 annually, though it doesn't mention how often the coating would need to be reapplied. Clearly, there is a lot to the subject of dimples and surface roughness when applied to the field of propellers. And for me, I think marine applications seem the most interesting at the moment. What I've learned is that we can take inspiration from golf balls and start to interfere with the boundary layer, controlling turbulence and using it to our advantage to reduce drag and even cavitation. As you're still watching, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps out the channel a lot. You might also like some of my other videos like this one on a SpaceX technology applied to heat pumps. And as always, thanks for watching.